Hi, my name is Michelle Andrasik. I'm reporting for HIV.gov live here from IAS 2024. And I have the great pleasure of being joined by Dr. Carl Diefenbach. Now, Carl, you and I were at the opening plenary this morning. And we had some really great uh, HIV vaccine uh, information. What do you think was the great takeaway message from this morning. So what we heard specifically about from Dr. Devon Suk was a, an approach called germline targeting. And what germline targeting is, is in the human body, there's thousands and millions of individual cells called B cells. What the germline targeter is, is the key recruiter that can go in and find that one magic cell that will grow up someday to be heavyweight champion of the world or the best Olympic athlete ever in the antibody category. Because as you know, there are four different sites of vulnerability on the HIV envelope. So each one can have a germline targeting component that can go in and say, this specific cell is the one we need. And then we pull it out, we make it grow up, and then we train it. And we train it like you're training an athlete. And someday that, that cell will make the best antibodies ever. That's how we're going to get to an HIV vaccine using germline targeting. Yeah, I love that analogy. It is so fantastic. It is. We're going to use that for our community engagement. I think it works. For, yeah. yeah for everybody can understand the notion of you, everybody can be an athlete, but only certain athletes can be Simone Biles or Usain Bolt yeah. or uh, uh, any, you name it, Lionel Messi. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, and that wasn't the most exciting. Well, maybe it was the most exciting, but another exciting um, uh, session was the uh, cabotegravir and the safety in pregnant women. Um, that, how exciting. What do you think was I, the big message so there? So that message was we've had, when we started the cabotegravir study, 084, we were coming out of the dolutegravir scare um, in Botswana. What we did was once we had the, the trial result, we allowed women, if they wish to get pregnant, to get pregnant and stay on cabotegravir. So a significant number of births of women on cabotegravir, we've, we've used the to under pharmacology, but best of all, it's really safe and quite effective. Um, and it is just a great step forward to a point where I think with very soon we will see this in WHO guidelines. I remain hopeful for that. Uh, and then we can start thinking about cabotegravir during the, the prepartum era, during pregnancy, postpartum, and then during the breastfeeding period. Yes. What a way to bend the curve. Yeah, so great. Well, what do you think the message is for health providers who are working with pregnant people or working with people who are thinking about getting pregnant? What we need to do, get the message out to the healthcare providers, is that this is coming and start talking to your population now about um, if you feel vulnerable to HIV and their population we can help you stay safe and protect your child and also have, be able to breastfeed without fear. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, now where my heart really lies, community engagement, the last part of the plenary this morning really talked about community engagement and some of the missed opportunities and the opportunities that we have available. So what did you get out of that? So I think it really painted a kind of a dim, kind of depressing picture of the missed opportunities. And it really is this intricate balance between missed opportunities to engage community. And then because we don't engage community, there isn't demand created. Therefore, the people spending programming don't order the medicine. So we reduce the price. And so it's this vicious cycle. Yeah. So reset. we have to get to a point where community is not at the table to begin with, but they are the first group sitting at the table. Yes. And we heard that in that session. 
And we also heard that in the Cabot Tegravir session where the discussion was, now it's time to really ask women of childbearing age what they need in terms of, uh, they think a way Cabot Tegravir could be used to help them. Yeah, I think it really underscores the importance of creating those relationships with people, creating relationships with community, and ensuring that throughout the research process, you've got community, you're, they're in your conversations, they're offering guidance and direction, and you know more of a team effort with our community. Absolutely, it has to be a, a team sport. Yes. And it has to be um, not a consultation where we're going to check a box that we talk to community. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure, Always. Michelle. <laughs>